And welcome back to The Drive Time. My guest is David Sullivan Nesbitt. We're talking to him about his personal journey of PTSD, his homelessness. Uh, now, you are not homeless right now. Is that correct, David? You're living in a hotel in Toronto? Yeah, I'm living in a hotel. Okay. Uh, obviously, th- there's a certain lack of permanence when one is living in a hotel. Um, let's talk about the charges, if we could, some of the charges that have been laid against you and, and, and where okay. they are in terms of how they've progressed. Okay. There's basically two sets. Like, like I was talking before, in in the fall of 13, right after I got fired, I went to a legal aid office, Parkdale, and I started an arrangement with them an engagement, a limited engagement, that they would represent me with my Canada Labor Code claims against Dell. Mm-hmm. What happened is, uh, because I I didn't, I was going straight to adjudication, there was going to be no mediation of any kind. I didn't want any uh, contact with Bell or Bell's lawyers from my lawyers. Mm-hmm. All they were doing was presenting to a judge from the, Canada, from the Labor Department. I found out that they had had some conversations, which is really not a big deal, but they wouldn't tell me what they were about, which is very alarming. And if you're going to in the battle against a multi-billion dollar company like Bell, and your lawyers are talking to Bell's lawyers, but they won't tell you what they're talking about, that's a big problem. They refused. I mm-hmm. talked to the director. I brought it up to the director of Parkdale, Nancy Henderson, and I was able to show her proof uh, that there was a limited engagement and that they were specifically not to speak. She saw the proof, panicked, cut off our legal engagement, and for the next three months wouldn't let me speak to my lawyer. She started this because she knew I had PTSD and because she knew how anxious I was. Mm-hmm. It became a cat and mouse game with her that she was going to toy with me and not let me speak to my lawyer, which okay, just, was just, ludicrous. Just let me let me stop you right there if I could. Yeah. I want to go back to, to what you were saying a moment ago about how... So you went to her, you explained the situation, she looked at your file, she realized that, yes, they probably shouldn't be talking to Bell. Yeah. Right? And at that point, you say she panicked. Now, what is it she panicked about? Do you know? Oh, she, right on the phone with her. See, I took screenshots of the actual proof that I sent her, uh-huh. so I could prove that she knew that her lawyers had basically made a mistake. Um, she basically panicked and cut off. She said, okay, our, our business relationship is effectively closed. It's why, over. though? Did she say why? Because she, because she... No, no, you're right. Good question. She never did say why. I speculate that she assumed that I was going to sue her. Mm-hmm. And I wasn't. I actually gave her the same deal I gave Bell. I said to her, if you let me speak to my lawyer and find out what was discussed with Bell's lawyers, I'll walk. I had no intention of suing her. I would never sue a lawyer. I would never be that stupid. It mm-hmm. just makes no sense. I had no desire to sue her, and I had no desire to get into a legal battle. I already knew I had one with Bell and the doctors who had let me go after 18 years. She assumed I was going to sue. And it's unfortunate because I wish she had taken me up on my offer. I did the same thing with Bell. I said to them, you know, if you treat me well and give me a decent package, I'll take your let's talk hypocrisy with me to my grave. Mm-hmm. And I would have. I would have been quiet about it for the rest of my life. Okay, no so just have... just so I let the, can get, let the listeners know what you're saying here. What you're saying is you, you at one point said to Bell Canada, look, you know, this is crazy. All you all you people need to do is is come to an arrangement. You know I'm suffering from PTSD. There's there's no doubt about that. We can't quibble this. But let's get this dealt with. You weren't willing to talk about Bell Canada afterwards. You're saying, look, just I'll take whatever settlement you guys offer me as long as it's reasonable. And they basically slammed the door in your face, correct? Yeah, yeah. Even worse, they played a game with me. Mm-hmm. I'd spoken to a couple of lawyers, so I had a pretty good feeling for how much money I should get. And I was quoted around $250,000. That might sound like a lot of money. And at first blush, if you have no money, it sounds like a lot. But if you're living in Toronto and you want to buy a house or you just have a... You have to plan... One lawyer said, plan for the unexpected because you don't know how your health is going to be. 250000 might sound like a lot, but after you go through medical costs and, and prescription drugs and all this stuff, you could go through it pretty quickly. I knew what I needed, and I knew what was fair. They came in with a, a number so ridiculously low... It was it was peanuts. It was four months' salary, um, and I said no, of course. And they set a trap, and they stopped answering the phones, and they stopped answering emails. All communication was cut, and they sent out a termination letter. They called it after they had already fired me, 
And they said, you have one week to decide whether you want to be fired or not. And if you don't want to be fired, then send us an email within one week. But if you do want to be fired, then don't bother sending us an email. I didn't read it that way because I was so sick of their ultimatums. I just glanced at the letter. I didn't know there was a deadline that I was supposed to pay attention to. And I think Dow Canada played poker and they lost. They thought I would panic, realize I was going to lose all my medical benefits, realize I was going to have no salary, and come to my senses and come back. They didn't understand PTSD. They didn't understand my reaction. It's unfortunate. It caused the lack of knowledge caused so much damage. And they were caught. At the end of the day, they were caught because they had fired me on paper. Mm -hmm. When the deadline came and went and I didn't respond, they technically had fired a man with PTSD while they were saying they were mental health advocates. Mm -hmm. They got caught, and they had not spoken to me. When I put up those uh, well, those uh, visuals, you know, with the uh, woman with the Canadian flag painted mm -hmm. on her face, yep. and I have my count up how many days it's been since uh, the cell, uh, what I call the Bell Silent Treatment, that's what I'm referring to. The very last day they spoke to me, it's been, I look today, 715 days they have refused to answer the phone when I call. Mm -hmm. Isn't well, that crazy? Well, it's, it's that? absolutely ridiculous. And and the bottom line, too, is, of course, I mean, no severance. There were no proper proper termination notification. You've got a, so you've got a case here with regards to uh, the labor code. But you've yeah. also got, this is also potentially a human rights case, isn't it? Isn't it? I mean, what well, your, your allegations are, and these are still allegations, listeners, is that Bell Canada, Bell Media Enterprises, uh, went on a, a concerted effort to undermine your sanity, to, in essence, force you to go silent one way or the other. And, of course, one way or the other means, you know, I mean, there was some of the, what you're telling me alludes to the fact that they were hoping that you would ultimately kill yourself, which you didn't do. Well, I tried, though, Dave. Did you know that? I tried on January 20th of 2014. Mm-hmm. What, see, the thing is, you mentioned about the police, and you, you reminded me of a guy uh, about a year ago who said to me, and this was before I pieced everything together myself, he said, what was going on with the police anyway? And he said, why were they yanking your chain like that? That never made sense to me. Mm -hmm. And it, it stayed in my mind because it never made sense to me either. Bell Canada would never solve a problem by going to the Toronto police unless a real crime had been committed. They would have figured out a million ways to deal with it internally. It's mm -hmm. just the nature of their of, of big company. But the police got involved. And, you know, that whole period, when I look back, it really... In one of my timeline charts, I, I just call that period darkness. And I didn't know at the time how relevant it was because there was this horrible, horrible darkness in that whole period. I was being harassed mm -hmm. head on by the Toronto police. It unsettled me. That psychiatrist, I have to give her credit. She saw something that I didn't really see or I was not willing to admit. The, the tension and the underlying anxiety became so much that I attempted suicide on mm -hmm. January 20th. Dave, three days later, I got a call from the Toronto police saying Bell Canada was dropping its criminal harassment charges against me. It was trying, it was trying to get me in prison, too. All of this criminal harassment stuff, getting back to your original thing, started with Bell. Bell sent the police to me in October. The police threatened arrest warrants, jail time, mm -hmm. all of this stuff. And it basically all got down to the point where it was so unsettling to me. It it really was mm -hmm. mental torture. I attempted suicide because of it. Well, now that drove me to suicide. And they were they were accusing you of criminal harassment, right? Now, just so I can clarify again for yeah, the yeah, listeners yeah, out there yeah. that may be not yeah. able to follow this as, as as well as I can. You know, so you were fired. You had grounds to contact them. You were trying to get your resolution. You were trying to get all your paperwork, everything else necessary when one is dismissed in this country, all that's required by the labor laws. And they yep. refused, 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 and you kept calling them. So, yeah. I mean, my understanding of criminal harassment is the undue and or unnecessary contact of an individual for no apparent reason. You clearly yeah, and, had a reason. And there has to be real fear there. You can't just call, you can't just say... Joe accused Joe criminally harassed me because he called three times to mm -hmm. I order on Saturday night. You know what I mean? There has to be real mm -hmm. fear. It just can't be some flippant thing because otherwise everybody would be doing it, which is what has ended up being the case in my case. With Bell Canada's case, I basically was calling them and saying, "Okay, 
Einstein's. You guys fired me. I have an illness, a mental health illness. I can't get another job. You cut off my medical benefits. What exactly are your plans for me? And they never answered the phone, and they went to the police, and I think it was their lawyer that did this. Mm -hmm. And if you know Heenan Blakey, that was the law firm representing Dell. They were involved in all of this. And if you remember, in, in the thing is, Dave, January, I attempted suicide. The only time in my life I've done it. One month later, Bell's law firm closed. I think they realized what the hell had happened. Mm -hmm. I had, because there were records of me calling Bell's law firm, begging them to stop harassing me, begging them to leave me alone, begging them to stop the police. They never did anything. I think the suicide woke everybody yeah. up, and some of the partners there thought, what the hell have we just done? We have committed a human rights violation. Mm -hmm. We mentally tortured this man. It's it's all provable, Dave. I got the psychiatrist note. When I put this up, when I put this point up about the psychiatrist report being used as mental torture, Bell's stock dropped three uh, dropped ten percent rather in three days. Mm -hmm. So Wall Street believes it. When you see Wall Street believing something like that, there's there's truth to it. It doesn't move. And a, a stock like Bell doesn't drop ten percent in three days. Well, I, I got to tell you, David, I'm, I'm glad that you're a guest on my show, but I do have to wonder, I mean, where is, where's CBC with, with, uh, with their show? Where's CTV with, with their public advocates? Where's the local media? Where's the Toronto Star? Where's the Globe and Mail? Where is the mainstream media when it comes to, now, I, I'm going to throw it out here and say that, obviously, the companies that are owned by BCE, Bell Canada Enterprises, they're not going to take your case and take it too seriously because they don't want to black mark their own company. But, I mean, CBC, See, there's got to be, you've got all of the evidence here, you've got all of this proof, and I mean, it, it's available online, listeners, for those of you that have been following this story, and, and it does beg the question, where the hell is mainstream media here? Why is it you're only getting your story out through somebody like me? Well, a couple of reasons. Um, you mentioned, of course, the ownership, which is one reason. I mean, the Toronto Star, actually, a reporter there sent me two emails and said, we have... Uh, a policy that we cannot write any story that's an anti-Bell story. Mm -hmm. She sent, the person sent me this email. So there's that story. I went to CTV News, I spoke to a director there, and he laughed at me. He said, well, you know we're owned by Bell, right? And it was just a big joke. That why would you even think of it? Mm -hmm. I think the other, there's two other factors at play here. If it's a company that's not owned by Bell... <laughs> They certainly have ties to Bell because of all the advertising that Bell would do. Just think about it through radios and newspapers around Christmas. Mm -hmm. They have strong ties. The other thing is there's a very strong political thing going on here. And I know that for a fact. I was talking to CBC for months and months and months, and they basically said what they needed to do a story. And I gave them everything they wanted. I gave them other people that had, committed, had attempted suicide at Bell who had PTSD. Mm -hmm. I gave them names. I gave them contact numbers. It was I gave them everything that they wanted because I wanted the story and I wanted to satisfy them. This went on for months. All of a sudden, I got this email one night at 10 o'clock saying, sorry, we're not interested, and the whole thing disappeared. I called the next day, and nobody, the guy refused to this day to answer and I was laughed at, I was hung up on, it was just, there was definitely a meeting or a, group, a, a team huddle that would, had gone on at some point and said, this guy is a blacklisted guy, do not talk to him, do not put anything on the air. Mm -hmm. I found that with all of them. I mean, granted, that was over a year ago. I haven't gone back to them, and I've been meaning to, but there's been so many things going on. Mm -hmm. You know, the story has progressed. It's gotten so much worse than it ever has been, that maybe they will start, you know, chomping at the bit. Um, the CDC did find me in a warming center when I was homeless in January, and they did keep a little bit of my, um, of my interview, and just, you know, most of it ended up on the cutting room floor, but you know how that goes. Mm -hmm. But they just... There's a lot going on, Dave. Um, well, I'm, I'm, a we're, lot we're going to take a quick break, David. I'm going to come yeah. back to you. I want to talk to you about what what you're doing now, uh, and you know what what do you think we can do uh, to get this story out there to to a broader audience beyond what we're doing this afternoon. My guest is David uh, Sullivan Nesbitt, and we are talking about PTSD and homelessness, and we're also talking about uh, his his 
troubles, if you will, with BCE and, and, and where that's taking him. Uh, we'll be right back after a few words from our sponsors. Please stick around. The story you are about to hear is true. Ed White fixed my refrigerator. And? He did a great job. Now I don't need to buy a new fridge. And if I don't... 